Welcome, JD and the Sump Sea. Scatter terrain, scratch build. Scatter scratch. My new term I'm going to be doing. This whole series that I'm going to be doing these are, is based upon narrative, little pieces of terrain you can put in a box because of whatever reason that you don't like doing um, other things. Space, time, want. Um, Necromunda is better played on boards that are painted up um, and have some immersion. What I'm going to show you here tonight is how you can just take some junk that you have lying around, put it together, and create a little space for a person to live in, basically. It's a little bit more than house building because I'm going to be going off the description of the personal hanger on that we're choosing. Tonight happens to be the Escher Shiver, kind of a mystic uh, crystal ball kind of a, you know, lady. She's really important for the Eschers. If nobody's ever used one in their Necromunda gangs, I highly recommend it. She's a lot of fun. This build is going to be the start of a long series of ones that we can do. Uh, you could, I'm going to paint it two different ways. One, basic, um, which is not basic, but you know, it's basic for me. Pretty quick job. And then we're going to add my flair to it in the second half of it. So, oh, I'm excited. We should get into it. Okay, let's start this out. We have the book of the, or the House of Blades, the book of the Escher, one of the coolest books out there. Um, we're going to be going to page 51 in this book. And here we are, we have the Escher Shiver. Um, lots of, she's a full pager here. So this is a little bit different for most hangers on. Um, this top part is where we're kind of concentrating on this because the the object of this exercise is not necessarily the hanger on, which is a secondary because you get to build a hanger on for your gang. Um, but I wanted to show this more along the lines of she's a wild cart, um, you know, and a crazy, crazy old bat sitting in a corner um, that the gang leaders go to talk to. So that's going to really dictate what kind of terrain we're going to be on here and what's it going to look like. You know, I see a crystal ball. I see some candles. I see an area that's probably two stories. Um, but anyways, yeah, all of these things you can utilize to create your piece of scattered terrain um, and in a pretty effective manner as well. So we're going to start out a little different here. You don't get to watch me glue my fingers together anymore. We're going to do some stop motion. Um, and all of this is just stuff laying around in boxes. Some of it, you know, terrain that I had already built, but I haven't touched it for two years or, you know, a while. Um, and then just convert up. Uh, if it's painted already, you know, great. You know, you can either repaint it or you can just add on like I'm going to be doing later. Um, I always like to make a model, which was another part of this exercise. It's always good to, you know, have scale. Uh, we're going to do a walkthrough here. This is basically the whole build. Um, you know, you get a model, you walk around in here, um, actually get your hands in this. You know, I mean, when this is all done, this is just going to go in its own little box of scatter terrain. So now we're going to decorate it a little bit, and it's just going to be basic. Um, I saw a table, I saw a crystal ball, I saw candles, and I saw a curtain. Um, and you don't have to do anything more than this. Um, you know, a lot of it after this is the artistic flavor and how much you want to put into it. But I mean, this would be fine to put on just the way it is. I mean, you know, a little bit of it's not painted, but that's, you know, 10 minutes you can get all that figured out. Um, and that's the point of this. So anyways, uh, we're gonna start on the curtain right away. I always Mod Podge this up. Um, once this glue all dries, after I've done this gluing and sanding trick, uh, it'll increase the strength of the model 
and the glue job. Um, yeah, you know, this we play with this terrain, so it gets bashed around quite a bit. So I always like to do several steps on that part. So, yeah, we're just priming the areas that we kind of added and glued together. Um, you know, give it a white highlight. So, uh, yeah, okay, so coming up here, the uh, metallics go down first, and then I'm going to be doing a acrylic wet blend with it. Um, I know a lot of people are touchy about the oils. Um, I really recommend that you get past that because um, they're fantastic products to use. Um, but anyways, uh, I did a class with Sam Lenz a couple weekends ago, and we uh, he showed me how to wet blend with acrylics real well. Uh, it's not that far off of oils, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it just dries a little faster. Um, and here we go. The piece is pretty much done at this point. Um, yeah. This is perfectly okay to go ahead. You know, there's the shiver all painted up. Like I said, I wasn't promoting her so much in this video. Um, but at this point, uh, this is perfectly great. But of course, you know, this is one of my videos. And I'm crazy about terrain. So we're going to go to the next stages. Um, hang on here. Hey guys, so at this point, you could call this done. Um, this is above average as far as pretty much any terrain piece that goes, that I've seen anyways. It's my terrain though. So we're gonna take a little while here and we're gonna go a little deeper. We're gonna add some oils, um, some other uh, effect paints to it, uh, just to stupidly make it pop. We're gonna add some poster work and some graffiti. Um, you know, standard stuff for me. So anyways, um, this won't take very long because my steps are generally pretty quick here because we're at the end. So um, enjoy the rest. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. There's a lot more Necrobunda hangers on that we can explore, make terrain for, just overall immerse our boards in the wonderful game of Necrobunda. Thanks for joining me again, and have a great night. <laughs>